Happy Thursday, one and all. Good to have you on the program today. <clears throat> this is going to be my last live stream for a little bit because my uh, family is going away for a bit. We're going to be away from uh, the office for a little bit. So uh, I'm not going to be able to do my show tonight and I'm not going to be able to do live streams all next week. But I do have a bunch of lore videos that I created that I'll be uploading to YouTube to, uh, and scheduling to publish while I'm away. So <clears throat> I'm not leaving you with nothing. They're going to be shorter lore videos because, you know, I had to make them all in a span of a few days, but you will get something. Now, as for today, sorry if I'm talking a little funny, I had some dental work done. Uh, as for today, we've got a couple of things on the agenda. The first item is I was told on Twitter that I forgot a mansion in my last live stream near to the lake uh, of Gad. So we're going to go back to the Gad area and explore the uh, mansions there, see if we can find one we've missed. Then I never went to the Uncanny Caverns. Uh, so I'd like to go to the Uncanny Caverns and check that out, see what's going on. Then I was told that there's some interesting lore concerning the uh, super mutants at a place called Spruce Knob. So we're going to go to Spruce Knob and see exactly what's going on with that. So I hope you're eager. Let's get into the game. See what's there. Solid Gamer in the chat. Hey there, Solid Gamer. All right. Good morning, Ox, says Chase. Good morning, Chase. Good to have you on the program today. And you too, Levi. What's up, Ox, says Joseph. Not much. Playing a little Fallout 76. Okay. Now, these are the mansions near the Lake of Gad that we explored. And I was told I missed one. So I'm taking a look at my mini-map. Okay, so there is a fissure site over there. But I'm not seeing any mansions on my mini-map that I missed. We did explore that one. Maybe it's down here. Boulevard says, uh, Afternoon Ox, glad to see you on. Good to see you here, Boulevard. Thanks for coming. Okay, this... That's the Torrance house. Yeah, okay. There's the jump. So, for those who are just now arriving, I've got a shorter live stream for you today because I uh, am going away for a little bit and I'm not going to be doing live streams while I'm gone, obviously. So, this is going to be my last live stream for a little while. You know what? I'm not seeing it on my compass here. I mean, is, is it an unmarked mansion? Because I'm not seeing any mansions that I missed. There's Riverside Manor over there. We've gone through Mansion Row up there. Let's go around Torrance House, see if we can uh, find one over here somewhere. Anyway, I, uh, so while I'm gone, I've created a bunch of small Fallout mini-sodes that I'll be publishing to my channel just to make sure that um, none of you are left without any content for the final week of December. Uh, I'll be I'll be back. I'm not sure when I'll be back and when I'll resume live streaming. So this is my last live stream for a while, but I'll of course let you know when I'm back.
That's how you do hunting in Fallout 76. <laughs> My last live stream was ridiculous. The whole mannequins. Okay, there's something up there. But I'm not seeing any other mansions. So let's go to Uncanny Caverns. That's one place I really wanted to explore that we haven't explored yet. Uh, and then we'll go to Spruce Knob. Oh, there's a lot over here that I haven't explored yet. What's that? Oh, Scorch Beast. Well, let's just hope he doesn't see me. I just... I don't feel like wasting the time. Honestly. What's this? Ooh. Looks like uh, one of those totems we saw at the Lucky Hole Mine. Oh, there's a gas mask on this one. So what does this mean? There's like a post-apocalyptic weird cult here in Appalachia that's creating these totems. Hmm. Oh! There's an event going on. Defend Rover while he repairs the communications uplink. Okay. Go scavenge for materials. Hello. I want you need to repair here. Ah. Holy cow. Ah. <laughs> Well, golly, <clears throat> Luke says, Zox, your live stream notification just made my day and instantly put me in a good mood. Thanks for the videos. Well, thank you so much for watching today. Hello. I bought Indian and repairs here. Okay, all right, all right, I'm coming. Repairing, damn it. Oh. Ah. Ah. 
<laughs> Niraj is getting all cranky over here. Anyone there? Rover unit in need of repairs. I just repaired you. Where, where, where are the scorches coming from? Okay, let's try this again. Get past me! Welcome, new member Kyle. Good to have you on the program. Circuit connections damaged, or at least they should be. No, 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 no. J.A. Bristol uh, says that there's... Uh, no, no, no. I, I said earlier that there's no broadcast later today. So, no, I'm not doing scotch and smoke rings later tonight. Uh, this, is, this right here is my last broadcast for a while. Because I have to go out of town. Gosh, they just all swarm at once. <coughs> what are you repairing there, I bought? Clearing workspace. Restoring physical connections. Oh man, that scope. Every now and then I'll try to use the scope and it doesn't work right.
What? Why is... Do I have to do it again? If you're hearing this, it means we should be up and running. And if we're not, well, back to the drawing board. Great. Is that it? Oh, and it disappeared. Reboot the system. Okay. Okay, reboot the system. Reboot. There we go. Yay! I completed the event. Have a Merry Christmas, Nocturne Jansen. Thank you so much. me man all right looks like I knew all those locations Continue on to the uncanny caverns after we loop. Grenade launcher. GG says Jared Phillips. Thank you, Jared. Whoa. What? What? <laughs> no. Oh, no. <laughs> Wacky wailing arm inflatable tube wolf. Why? Every time. 
Look, that's <laughs> two of them. <laughs> oh no. Oh man, and now it's in my lore video. <laughs> Oh, I can't even hit it in vats. <laughs> oh, that! <laughs> no! <laughs> what? Wow, it's attacking! <laughs> How does it get? <laughs> Dagon wolf. <laughs> okay, how do I kill this one? Um, what do I aim at? It's two now. I'm getting angry. Okay, Pain Train gets it. <laughs> Do I have any explosives? I don't even know. Ah! I mean, I gotta ignore it, right? Okay, uh. <laughs> I somehow got it there. Oh, what? I've seen that happen with dead creatures before, but never with living ones. Well, that was fun. <laughs> well, here we are at the Uncanny Caverns. Let's head on in. See what we got here. That was the most Bethesda thing ever. Yeah, I agree. That was very, very Bethesda. Oh, corpse in the garbage can. Oh, something seedy. Fusion cores, all right. I gotta get rid of some of the stuff I'm carrying. Whoa. 
Oh, is that the entrance to the caverns? Cool. J.A. Bristol says, <clears throat> given what we just witnessed, uncanny is a bit of an under understatement. Uh, I, I agree. More like, um, magical. Cassie says, hi again, Ox. Merry Christmas from Australia. <sighs> hi again, Cassie. Merry Christmas back at you. Pre-war worker, maybe? <clears throat> See what the lore says. Transaction terminal and reception. Ooh, holotape. Curse of the Wendigo, part one. Oh, great. It's a long one. and sometimes terrifying world that exists in the shadows and fringes of our own, where myth, legend, and rumor are made real. Yes, it's time for more thrilling Tales from the West Virginia Hills. It has been said that money is the root of all evil. So when greed knows no bounds and avarice goes unchecked, what other appetites might take hold? Tonight's gripping tale, Curse of the Windigo, shoes over this very question. We begin at the Corvego Auto Assembly Plant in Huntersville, West Virginia, where plant owner and operator Richard Moore is known for squeezing every ounce of profitability from his workforce. Uh, 
But fortunately for the Moore family, all is not as it seems with their recovering patriarch. Tune in next time for the <laughs> thrilling conclusion of Curse of the Windigo. Wow. Well, <clears throat> I love those radio plays. They're really well done, but they do kind of make you stop mid-action to, to listen to them. And I missed a couple of uh, messages. Let's see. Scott says, Hey, Ox, did you find Kelly's holotape at Hornwright Summer Villa? I wasn't able to find the associated quest location. Um, I found many holotapes at the... Hornwright Summer Villa. Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Kelly Solo Tape. Right. Let's remind ourselves. Hey, Anya. I know we're just supposed to leave yeah. useful things in the dead drop, so. Uh, so we found. Uh, so there was a cabin. You, you, you need to watch uh, my last episode. But there was a cabin close to the Hornwright Summer Villa. And there we found Kelly's next holotape. And we get the impression that they went to the Mistresses of Mystery. All right, reception terminal. Tour guidelines memo. Welcome as a new member of the Uncanny Caverns family. Part of your job uh, will be to give multiple guided tours a day. <clears throat> Our motto is to give tour guests an uncanny experience. What does this mean to you? One, Night Kid is real. Seriously, you have to truly believe this to sell it to others. 75% of our vacation traffic comes nationwide from those who have read about Night Kid in the tabloids. And our job is to sell that to them. He was born here and remains to this day. We have plenty of literature for you to absorb on the subject before you start leading tours alone. Upsell, <clears throat> upsell, upsell. We've gotten a lot of complaints <clears throat> that our wild cave and extreme adventure tours are underwhelming. But that means the guides aren't doing their job. People can go anywhere for a natural cavern. They come here for the spooky atmosphere and the night kid mythos. It's your job to give that to them. Three, we've gotten reports of some tour guides allowing some really inappropriate things to happen during the lights out portion of the tour. Oh no, <clears throat> don't let this be you. Use your common sense and best judgment when it comes to how you conduct yourself. Keep in mind, uh, keep this in mind and you'll, you'll uh, no doubt be an upstanding employee. Have an uncanny day. Okay, so we got some creepy stuff ahead apparently. What's in the locked one? Let's hack it. W A R P A T H. W A R P A T H. W A R P A T H. W A R W A R P A T H. There it is. Monthly transaction revenue. <clears throat> Base admission slash automated tour narrated by Dick Shale. Adults, $14, ages 13 plus, 11, uh, 1,189 sold. Children, $7, ages 6 to 12, 1,578 sold. Small children free, ages 5 and under, and a total sales, 27,692. So it's a small business for uh, pre-war America. I mean, these seem like modern-day prices, not pre-war American inflation prices in the Fallout universe. Wild Cave Tour includes base admission, $89, ages 10 and up, 392 sold. Total sales, 34,888. Extreme Adventure Tour, all tours bundled plus the Devil's Toll Pass, $179. Okay, this, this is starting to get more like that. 43 sold. Devil's Toll, $99, four sold. Gifts, store, transactions, monthly transactions, 762. Gross sales, September, 75,247. Previous month, 84,759. All right, uh, nice little bu uh, business they got here. Recommendations, increase sales of 
Upgraded tour packages. Increased base admission price. Remove the Devil's Toll standalone passes. <clears throat> Disengage luck. <clears throat> All right. And then we can go take the tour. Wow, it is now daytime. That was a long holotape. <laughs> haven't we seen the uncanny cave before? You may have seen it before, but I haven't. I have never been here. Drink, okay. Go get the safe. Did I forget a safe? I did forget a safe. There was a safe under the desk, and I think I missed it. Nope, I got it. I hear something moving. Ian Otter says, Hey Ox, thanks for the awesome content. Gonna be recovering from surgery after Christmas. Looking forward to watching you while I get better. Merry Christmas back at you. Okay, are you going to just attack or run? The beautiful uncanny caverns. Looks like that's just a decoration. I can't interact with it. <clears throat> Is this <clears throat> is this a quest of some sort? No, we're just exploring.
did. She did. Oh, here we go. Greetings, adventurers. I'm Dick Shale. You may remember me from automated tours at locations such as the Fancy Lads Factory and Prickett's Fort. Your journey begins in the Winding Gateway. As you descend the staircase, you travel back to an ancient land, millions of years old and perfectly preserved in time. Time travel sure works up an appetite, so guests with an upgraded tour plan can grab a complimentary box of Dandy Boy Apples. Yes, Dandy Boy Apples. So good, <laughs> they never go bad. After our photographer <laughs> captures the memory of a lifetime, head down the wooden path to learn the fascinating and mysterious history of the world-famous Uncanny Caverns. Thanks, Dick Shale. Love your narration. I didn't know there was a Fancy Lads factory. We will have to go find it someday. Marker two. Congratulations on making it all the way down the winding gateway. A feat powered by the refreshing fuel of Dandy Boy Apples. During this self-guided tour, you'll experience majestic natural formations that evoke an otherworldly sense of awe and reverence. You'll also hear tales of the dark and mysterious Night Kid who leapt from the depths of these caverns into the imaginations of millions worldwide. Head left to continue the tour, and please stay on the wooden path. Is is this like a uh, It's Always Sunny reference? Night Kid. Ah. Master of the day, you know. Villain of the day, kid. Oh, master of the sun. Ooh, I don't remember. I don't remember the lyrics to the Nightman. The Nightman cometh. Is that what we got? We got the day kid cometh here. <laughs> All right. Um. That's 10, so that's the end. All right, so we need to go this way. You have to pay the toll. <laughs> you have to pay the troll toll. <laughs> that's right. Night Kid is a bad boy reference. Oh, bad boy. Okay. It's like they come up to see who I am and then politely wait their turn to, to attack. I'd run right into him, but I'm encumbered. Here we go, three. Now in the royalty room, made up of three beautiful natural columns named the King, the Knight, and the Squire. Fun fact, columns are formed by the natural union of stalagmites and stalactites over many years. The King column is over 200,000 years old. When first surveyed, the royalty room was filled with two tons of litter and dead livestock dumped by local farmers through a now collapsed hole. Head left to continue the tour. And remember, no littering. 
Thank you, Dick Shale. Four. Before you is the entrance to the Night Kid room, where the mysterious half man, half bat was first discovered. Night Kid was found in complete darkness and surrounded by bats. He was two feet tall, weighed 19 pounds, and had been feeding on moths to survive. You can explore this part of Appalachian history and more at a reasonable price as part of our wild cave tour, sold separately. Head right to continue the tour. Please let members of premium guided tours pass before proceeding. Ah. <clears throat> sold separately, eh? Let's see what exactly is down here. Uh oh, it's booby trapped. Okay, I need to drop some weight. where the bat boy was supposed to be? Just a lot of cooking stuff. Hey, live and love eight. An experience to remember. Oh. Harpoon gun? Oh, it's the first time I've seen a harpoon gun. In Fallout 76, at least. Level 50. 193 damage. So it's lower than my Gauss rifle, and it's a big gun. And look at that fire rate. <laughs> oh man, that fire rate. Ah! Oh. Crazy. We got a hollow tape. Oh no, it's Curse of the Wendigo Part 2. All right. Tuck yourselves in. We got a new story. Tonight, we bring you the final chapter of Curse of the Wendigo. When last we left off, Richard Moore was recovering from radiation exposure. His family had just returned home. Can I show Dad my gun? Jimmy, I told you, not in the house. And remember, you can't go into the bedroom yet. Aw, stupid quarantine. I know it's hard, sweetheart, but we just have to be patient. This happens to lots of people with important jobs like your father's. Okay, I won't go in. I'll just say hi. Is that you out there, Sport? Yeah, it's me. Uh, Jimmy, uh, I'm hungry. Okay, Dad. I'll go tell Godrich to make you something. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, uh, why don't you come in, son? Oh, no. Old man, a visit. I'm not supposed to get too close yet, remember? Now, James, if your papa says it's okay, then it's okay. Now, you come in here. Uh, I don't know. You sure? Positive. Come and give your dad a big hug. Now, Jimmy. Well, all right. If you say it's okay. There he is. There's my boy. Looking fit as a fiddler. Dad, what's wrong? You don't look better at all. You've gotten so thin I can see your bones. You've lost all your hair, too. You look almost like a skeleton. Oh, so sorry, Jimmy. Daddy's hungry. So very, very hungry. <laughs> oh, Come no. closer, son. Come to Daddy. What? No, Dad, no! Was it the radiation, a side effect of the medication? Or was it greed that caused this carnivorous transformation? We may never know. Be sure to tune in next week 
for another thrilling chapter of Tales from the West Virginia Hills. Well, that's how the Wendigo arrives. And actually, we don't need, I don't, I don't really want the harpoon gun. Although I'm, I'm not encumbered. Oh, I am encumbered. Let's drop that. I don't want it. And I'm still encumbered. How am I still encumbered? Oh, is it all that food? Let's eat up some of that food. All right, let's move on to marker five. Before you leave the royalty room, we'd like you to experience the decades old tradition of listening for Night Kid. Some say if you're quiet enough at the right time of day, you can hear Night Kid scurry around the dark recesses of the cave ceiling. Now everybody in the tour group, take a brief moment of silence. If you dare. When you're done, head down the stairs to continue the tour. Please watch your step. I was half expecting to hear something. I mean, they're 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 really leading us up up for something big, but uh, not yet apparently. I wonder if we will find a Wendigo. I can sprint now, right? Is this um? Okay, so here's another off-the-beaten-path trail. Let's uh, see what's down here. Is it going to explode? Nope. <laughs> ah, spikes. Doggone it. Ooh, a banjo. Oh, this just skips ahead. All right. Well, that's what I get for exploring. I want to skip ahead. Back to the road. In front of you is the Halfling Hole, the second stop on our guided wild cave tour. The Halfling Hole, so named for its cozy size and quaint surroundings, features a natural pool with water so pure it has to be tasted to be believed. Oh, okay. It is thought that the reason Night Kid was able to thrive for so long here is the abundant sources of shelter, fresh water, and bugs for protein. <laughs> and right to continue the tour. We remind guests to please not enter the Halfling Hole without a premium tour badge. The Halfling Hole? Tolkien, Tolkien lore confirmed in the Fallout universe. A puncturing board. Right, let's go into the Halfling Hole here and... Alley -oop. Okay, so we got some spring water still after all these years. And it's dirty, ah. Uh, I was hoping it would be pure. <sighs> oh, come on, <laughs> just keep falling over him. Ah, I'm so bad at this. All right, and I'm encumbered again. There, I don't need that. Crazy says, hello, Oxhorn, how are you today? I'm doing fine, or I was before I found a Wendigo. Oh. Oh, and I'm out of ammunition. Oh man, I, I just used up all my shotgun shells with those scorched. Who compensated vicious lever action rifle? I will take that 
for the mods. All right, seven. The next stop in our tour is the impressive Poseidon's Passage, so named after the ancient Greek god of the sea, earthquakes, storms, and horses. The impressive stalactite and stalagmite to your left, known as the trident, will one day come together to form a massive natural column. The natural cave water here is filtered through the cavern rock over centuries and is pure enough to bathe a newborn child in. Cross the bridge to continue the tour. For legal reasons, we encourage guests to stay on the trail and away from the water. Deep, cold water, do not swim. Minzy says, never cared to know much about the lore of Fallout till I caught my husband watching your channel. Now I've seen all your episodes you post. Keep up the great work, Ox. Look forward to more. Thank you, Mincy. I look forward to making more. Well, they wanted us to stay on the trail, but let's see. Ooh, it's toxic water. Anything up here? How deep is it? Oh, it's really deep. Way deeper than I thought. Pop a Radex. Hello. Someone went off the trail. Stealth boy. Could the stealth boy have something to do with the lights out portion of the tour we read about? If so, a bit creepy. Never be better says, Hey Ox, love on the stream. Do you have a favorite piece of music for each Fallout game? I imagine you hear them a lot while making your videos. Uh, yeah, but I don't know their names. <laughs> the the songs that I are that I'm always working with are named like um, Flatwoods Outside Day or you know Institute Theme or something like that. Uh, it's um, so I, I don't really know the names of the songs, but yeah, the it, there are some great ones, and uh, I really enjoyed the Minuteman theme. There are a number of Minuteman theme songs from Fallout 4. They're really good. And I really enjoy the um, railroad songs. Here we go, number eight. The third stop on our premium wild cave tour is the dead end, where the final standoff between Night Kid and the Federal Marshals took place. Night Kid, now an aggressive five foot tall predator, was cornered and captured by the marshals after a lengthy and deadly chase through the caverns. He remained in captivity for a decade before he was freed under mysterious circumstances and returned to the caverns where he lives to this day. Step up the right path to continue the tour. Watch out for bats. Bats, eh? Well, we'll have to do something about that. Another trap. Another board. Ah. Hey. Whoa. Well, some settlers trying to make new lives for themselves here. 
Another magazine. Tumblers today. Great. Ian with a tip. Thank you, Ian. End of dungeon. Steamer trunk. Short ultralight pistol. Oh, it's booby trapped. Ah! Is it gonna blow? Oh, clever. I wonder why it didn't trigger when I opened it. Huh. Maybe lag? Server lag? Geo says, oh cool, I see you finally made it to here. Did Wally and his golden holotape lead you here, or did you just come across it? Uh, I just came across it. I didn't know there was um, a Wally who had a golden holotape. But uh, that's good to know for, uh, for before I make my lore video on the place. Nine. Now we arrive at the infamous Devil's Offering, a tight and dangerous connection through the middle of the cavern to the royalty room. It is said that only those who offered a toll to the Devil could get through this tight passage unscathed. Travel through Devil's Offering is only available by purchasing the Extreme Adventure Tour upgrade. Inquire at the gift shop to learn more. Head left to reach the final stop of the tour. So there's a chamber up here. Oh, that's where I came from. Okay. Just connects back. And this finishes the loop with number 10. The final stop of the self-guided tour is where it all began. The War Room. It inspires both fear and respect from its size and massive formations. In the center of it all is Odin's Tooth, the largest natural cavern formation in Appalachia. It is truly a breathtaking sight to behold. We thank you for spending your time with us at Uncanny Caverns and encourage you to return soon for the Wild Cave and Extreme Adventure Tours. Head left up the <laughs> stairs to exit, then please visit the gift shop on the way out. Thank you and have an uncanny day. This is Dick Shale, signing off. I mean, that's the entire cave, though. How exactly can they turn this into an extreme adventure? I mean, I can't fault them for trying, I guess. Well, there you go. That's the Uncanny Caverns. We did find a Wendigo, which was fitting after listening to two really long holotape lore pieces about the Wendigo, but there wasn't much uncanny about the place. Uh, all right, I need to step away for just a second. Gonna make some lunch for my boy.
Am I dead? No, I'm not dead. Okay. Scorch Beast? Oh no, is there a Scorch Beast up here? I don't see one. I can't believe I didn't find a single workbench in that entire place. Ooh, we got a mist. Oh, you see that? Wow. Shadows from the trees on the mist. Look at that. That gamer says, hello, hello, Oxy. I got a legendary combat shotgun with additional projectile. And with the right perks, I can do almost 300 damage. You can have it for free if you want. Well, that's very kind. Thank you, that gamer. Uh, but I prefer I prefer to play the game my uh, my on my own uh, to collect my own stuff and that's just part of the fun of the, the sense of achievement uh, that you get when playing games. But I do appreciate it. it's a very kind offer. Okay, where does this put us out? Oh, are we close to the White Spring? Yeah, there's the white spring. Uh, okay, I need to... I'm encumbered. I'm way encumbered. I need to scrap up and sell. So let's get rid of stuff so that we can... Okay, 10 pounds, 9 pounds left to go. Oh, I'm carrying a lot of magazines. Oh, but they're not very heavy. pounds a two pound banjo okay now we can go to my camp Took a long time for the world to sort of zone in. Ajax says, hey there, Oxhorn. I'm in school right now, but I came here to watch your stream. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I'm glad you're in school, and I'm glad you're watching. But uh, I, I hope you're not missing out on a, on a great lecture <laughs> by watching my program in school. How many fusion cores are you carrying? Twelve. I admit I'm carrying probably way too many. All right, let's scrap up stuff we don't need, like the lever action rifle for the mods. I got a reflex sight out of that. Uh, okay. Ooh, okay, my house power just flickered. If I go dead because of a power outage, which is not unlikely, um, I probably won't be coming back because I got to get ready for my week away by creating some lore videos. Just just a heads up. And I'm full. Oh, man. How is it 603 of 600? Well, let's uh, bulk some stuff if we can. The only two that save any room is aluminum, are aluminum and lead. So let's bulk aluminum. And 
lead. All right, let's store everything and see what that did. Consumed a lot of our plastic, sadly. Hey, and we're able to store it all. Yay, all my junk. All right, let's go sell some of the legendaries and stuff that we got from the, uh, the nuke event that we don't really need. Make ammunition. Oh, right. Thank you. Yeah, I do need to make some ammunition. Oh, I love that mist. You see that mist? Oh, that's great. That's so pretty. You can get over 600 if you scrap items in your camp. It goes right into your stash. Uh-oh, does that mean I lost my water purifier? No, here it is. But no water. I guess I should lock it. Every time I go to check it, there's no water there. Ah, uh, thank you. Yeah, I need to make some shotgun ammunition. Oh! But I need to equip the right... The right, uh, perk card first. But I don't want to level up. Let's go to... Ammo Smith. All right, and we go from 12 to 21. That's so great. Same materials and everything. All right. 285. How am I doing on Gauss Rifle? I'm still doing good. I crafted up 200 a couple days ago, and uh, I'm good to go. So... My black diamond, I should really repair that. Let's repair it. The rest are okay. All right. Uh, I still have some lead scrap here. Not sure why. Ah. <sighs> okay, let's do a little bit of uh, game management. Let's sell and then go to Modus to sell and see if we can get the plans we need for our X01 calibrated shocks. Daryl says, too bad you don't get to make any preset loadouts for convenience. Yeah. Uh, that's what I was thinking. That's the first thing that came to my mind. I wish I had a loadout that was just for crafting. And then a loadout that was for combat. May I be of assistance? Interested in getting machete. Don't need that. Zealot's railway rifle. Don't need that. Hunter, hunter's trapper chest piece. Serve and protect. Life saving. Life saving. Weightless. Okay, what else do I have that I can sell? Serve and protect. Ooh. Wow, that looks really gross. Uh, Psycho. I don't need Psycho. I'm never going to use it. Mentats. Uh, let's see. At 
Your service, sir. Man, some of my food is really... Yeah, I'm going to sell that before it goes bad. Some of my food is really getting close to going bad. May I be of assistance? The universe says, be sure to modify your legendary machete with the sacrificial blade mod at Watoga. This will make it a lot better than Black Diamond. Will it? The one I just sold? Uh, d didn't I just sell it to this guy? At your service, sir. Vampire Cultist Blade. Brief health regeneration when you hit an enemy. Oh, that's cool. Doesn't do as much of as my uh, black diamond, though. Serve and protect. Huh. Well, I don't see the the machete here. Oh well. Looks like I <laughs> looks like I sold it. All right. Pimp Wagon says you should do a video on the radio plays all stitched together for those of us who love them. Yeah, I really should. I need to collect them all and um, put them together. Alright, what, Modus, what you got for me, please? Uh, and the exact same scope I bought a while ago. Man. I guess you gotta be really lucky. Let's see. We got time, I think. Let's head. Well, the fastest way to Spruce Knob is going to be up from the mountainside bed and breakfast.
was delayed. There we go. That was weird. Had a weird chat glitch. There we go. Looks like chat is working now. Weird. The entire thing went white. Okay, uh, so there should be a railway. I could follow some railway tracks to get over there. Yep, looks like I have to go south first. Change your perks. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, yeah. What did I have, Mr. Sandman? There we go. Oh no, it's not a train track, it's a monorail. And it goes right over this rocky ledge. There we go. What was that? In a lake near the undiscovered fissure site next to you is where that raider related holotape was that I was talking about live streams ago. See, there's a delay. Like, there's no fissure site next to me now. Or is there? I don't see a fissure site. There's someone's house. Did you find the other three vaults? No, I haven't found them yet. Matthew says, Even an ox, have a good Xmas, buddy. Much respect from the UK. Thanks, Matthew. Glad to have you here. Ooh, a nice little river. This guy has a great little camp set up. Look at the spot he picked. Wow, well done. Is that the only guy that was here? Nope. There's some robots up there. Spruce Knob! Looks like a Brotherhood of Steel outpost. We see a Brotherhood of Steel flag flying. Uh-oh. Scanning. 
Hardcore, hostile, area, secure. <laughs> <laughs> Fugitive is attempting to evade capture. Beginning. Oh no, do, am I not going to be able to loot him? Oh, there he is. Oh, that's, no, that's an acid sight. Well, I guess I can't get those fusion cores, oh well. Let's head up into Spruce Knob and see what we got here. Actually, let's go to the monorail over there first. Monongahela National Forest Campground, Spruce Knob Lake. You just made my day. Opening fire. Is there an elevator down here? Yeah. Let's try the elevator. Whoo! Is there another one? Cristobal says, Ox, make sure you check Spruce Knob Lake. There's some pre-war Brotherhood lore in a cave nearby. All right, I'll check it out. Prospector's hat. Oh man, this is a cool monorail, but it's really horrible what happened to everybody. Every monorail we find is just bodies and bodies. Uh oh. Is there another one? Oh, fusion core. Ajax says, hey, uh. Ox, I'm going to hop off the stream. Hope you and your family have a good Christmas. Until next time, old friend. Well, thank you so much for coming. Until next time. Hey. One shot at a level 50. I'll take it. What's 
There's beeping coming from here. Oh, it's got a workshop. Oh, great. Can't be claimed with enemies nearby. Okay. I don't know if this is a graphical glitch or what, but the uh, the decals look darker over here. Almost like they got burned. All right, let's see if we can clear it out of any more. Yeah, look at this. Is that all explosive? E uh, explosive damage or something? There we go. So, enemies cleared. What have we here? Lots of stuff. Whiskey, scrap, ammunition, footlocker. Volpine Soul says, hey, a great place for lead if you're running low is the motel near the responders in Flatwoods. Yeah, that's a great tip. Thank you. Huh. I've been admiring this place on the map for a long time, wondering what kind of story was going to be here, but it looks like it's just a workshop. <laughs> Ash says, that glowing noodle wolf combat had me crying with laughter. Thank you for that. Yeah, I'm glad someone was having fun with that. And by the end, he's just, I I'm getting frustrated. I don't know how he's attacking me. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, since we're here, we might as well claim this workshop. I never keep workshops for long. I really don't care about them, but this will be a fun experience. Let's see what we get. Spend 25 caps to claim this workshop. Other players may initiate PvP with you by attempting to claim it from you. Okay. Yay, I got a workshop. Ooh. And then we'll go down and explore that lake. Cool. Is that it? I think that's it. Do I now have to protect it? Plan pianos. All right, let's head south. Let's go to that lake that you guys were talking about for some good Brotherhood of Steel lore. What's that? I think that's just the uh, the checkpoint that leads up here. Now build defenses. Eh, I just don't want to waste resources on something I'm, I really don't care about. I mean, I'm not going to defend it. I just claimed it to claim it. Hey, there's our sentry bot. Whoa! Fusion core! Wow. This part of the concrete visitor center crumbled. Oh! Is this a campground? It crumbled into a campground? Gold deposit.
There's the lake. Ox follow Highway 103 all the way to the south. Maybe. The marker for this map is uh, off. Like, I discovered the campground way back there. Event defense spruce knob. Oh, no. Oh, that's just the thing up there. Yeah. Vile ticks. <sighs> okay, so that's a sign. Okay, campground, lake, and camping this way. Let's just hover in place there for a minute. Okay, we got a lake. We got a note. Oh, and I can't read the note. Don't do this to me. No. Uh, oh! It's a queen! This will be my first queen if I can get her. Oh no. <laughs> Gambit says, Hey Ox, I recently discovered you. I'm a disabled veteran and one of the things that helps with my PTSD is Fallout. Your lore videos help calm me down with my severe depression. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for watching. I'm glad you're here. I'm getting sneak attack after sneak attack. Ox, it can see you. It's killing you. No, it can't see me. I was still hidden. It's a, my, my, my danger meter read caution. 
which meant that it kind of knew the location where I was, but it couldn't see me. So it was spo- it was spouting off poison to try and just blanket the area with poison to get me, but it still never found me, which is why I was getting sneak critical after sneak critical. Uh, where's the corpse? All right, well, a little underwhelming, but I got some Queen Mirelurk meat. Looking forward to cooking that up. Woo! First Mirelurk Queen. What's this? Another note that I can't read? Come on, guys. Why include it if I can't pick it up? Ah. Looks like we got a campground over here. Anything in the tents? Getting lots of wolf meat. I feel like walking right away with a ton of wolf meat this episode. Okay, well, I was told I would find lore. I have not found lore. I will keep looking for lore. Another queen! <laughs> no! No, another queen! Oh no! What, I can't hurt them if they're in the water? <laughs> they found me. Oh, run away. Run away. Scott says there's a vault at the end of the S-103. Uni Universe says holotape mistake camp on a small table. Okay, I'll go back. But I got a Myler Queen to tackle first.
Man, why use bats? Hope she sees me. Oh man, when I'm not getting sneak criticals, I'm really in a rough spot. Marlark meat, all right. I'm suffering from lock joint. Okay. Lore on the campsite, and then it looks like there's a cave. Hello. We got ourselves a cave. All right, so I was told I missed a hollow tape. Let's go back and get that hollow tape. Okay, hollow tap on a table. You're right. I totally mi missed it. Impromptu raider meeting. Hey, hey, hey. Put the gun down. We're here to talk. Fine. You repping the cutthroats? Maybe. Just asking. Name's Rebo. I'm repping the diehards. Frank. So, uh, what's this all about? It's about survival. Our gangs are getting picked off one by one. Yeah, by other gangs. That's how things work. The hell with that. We're dying out here. All of Appalachia's trying to kill us, and it's got nothing to do with turf or loot. You're talking about the Gourmands? <laughs> those, those idiots ate each other to death. Not just the Gourmands, but the Blackwater Bandits, Trappers, Hell, all of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a rough world. I get it. So what's your point? My point is, we need to band together, okay? Watch each other's backs. If we don't, we might just end up disappearing. What's in it for us? Staying alive? Do you understand what I'm saying, or are you too stupid? Don't ever say that to me again. This is what I'm talking about. Pointing that gun at me again is not going to solve anything. He'll get you to shut the hell up. Wow. What the 
hell? He killed Repo? Shoot him! Shoot him! Oh, these raiders! <laughs> Brilliant tacticians! Same thing. What? What's this? What? Now, what have we here? Jammin says they really ought to add a weapon health bar to the HUD. That would be nice. Ooh! What is this? Oh, bear traps! Taggarty's Journal! October 21st, 2077. Arrived at Appalachia. It's beautiful. Safe. The Thunder's treating the whole thing as an extended field trip. Asked Wilson to knock some sense into them. A favorable performance evaluation could mean choice assignments in upcoming offensive. These war games are being monitored closely. It feels like something's big. something big is around the corner. I sympathize with the men, though. Man, it's good to be back in America. And after the games, a two-week furlough. Da Silva grew up around here. She has offered to show us around the local watering holes. But mission first. <clears throat> so, Taggarty, a former U.S. military officer, came here with her team just before the bombs dropped. That's why she was in Appalachia when Maxon reached out to her. What's this? Radio log. Trying band, uh, AH-13. That's it? Trying band, uh, AH-13. Lieutenant, I got something. I can't make anything out. Sorry, working on it. Maxon to Appalachia. Repeat, this is Captain Roger Maxon. Give that to me. Seeking any. Lieutenant Taggarty here. Captain, it's you. Busy. <laughs> Damn, it's good to hear a friendly voice. Captain, I heard. I heard you're a traitor. Traitor? Disobeying unconscionable orders makes you a traitor. I suppose I am. Lizzie, I, I'm glad you're alive, but I need to find someone in Appalachia. Someone dependable. That's where I am. The Thunder was running war games against some jarheads. So there's still one piece. My God, Lizzie, this, this is good news. Roger, you're a traitor. I could be court-martialed even talking to you. Lizzie, look around you. The army's gone. America has fallen. I know you have questions, but we need to talk. There are things I learned at Mariposa. I got a scientist with me, Dr. Takano. We'll set up a secure channel. I'll answer all your questions then. Captain. Lizzie. Monitor this band. Taggarty out. <laughs> this is what I've been waiting for. And another one, War Games. We're in the mission boundary, right, Weber? Uh, we're at Spruce Knob. Uh, two clicks. We're two clicks from the edge. So we hug the line, move hard, move fast. And we may catch the Marines with their pants down. LT, you may want to listen to this. What is it, Moreno? The comp. Chatter's weird. Let me... No, 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 no. Confirm nuclear strike on New York. Shit. Shit! Oh, God. It's the end. The end! Keep off! The whole 
channel's been uh, blocked. Not sure how they're doing that. Man, the brass is going all out. Is this part of the war game, Lieutenant? In the event of a nuclear exchange, we are to immediately seek orders from a superior. For the purpose of these war games, however, we are completely on our own. Cut off from command. Any standing orders we can fall back on, Lieutenant? None that I know of. Whoa! Did you... There's one over there, too. Mother of... <sighs> this isn't no war game. Turn that off! So Taggarty, Taggarty and her thunder were doing war games here in Appalachia when the bombs dropped. Cut off from the army, cut off from chain of command. That's when she heard from Roger Maxon. War game orders. The Secret Department Army, U.S. Army Rangers, War Games, China Operations Scenario. To Lieutenant Taggarty, summary, your unit, now specified as friendly, is ordered to act as U.S. Special Forces deployed behind the lines in an unspecified Chinese province. You are tasked with sabotaging target armored personnel carrier. Secondary objective is to gather Chinese field intelligence. Although stealth is advised and preferred, friendly can achieve objective in any manner. There are two detachments of Marines posing as hostile Chinese forces. For the duration of this operation, friendly must act on its own initiative. Further details in supplemental booklet, United States Army, Appalachian Territory. Wow, one more. Taggarty's Journal, November 4th. The radio chatters of ma the radio chatters of madness and death, and most of all, chaos. No one's in charge. Marino picked up some government transmissions out of Charleston, but no military command. We're supposed to reestablish the chain of command, but after what Maxson said, could our government really be using military prisoners as test subjects? Injecting them with experimental serums like human guinea pigs? I can't believe it. I'm going off books here, but the first priority is survive. Gather supplies. Hunker down and make it through the winter. De Silva says there's a survival training camp northeast of here. Hopefully we can come to some arrangement. The next time a storm hits us, we set out. If we do it right, no one will even know see us. Patrick says, you're doing so many live streams, Zox, I can't keep up. I'm only on day 12. Well, that's all right, my friend. I'll be taking a break from live streams for a bit, so that'll give you plenty of time to catch up. Wow. Well, I mean, this explains it. This answers the burning question we've all had since we started the Brotherhood of Steel storyline. And, I mean, it's great, but it's frustrating because had they included this somehow... I don't know, in the course of the primary plot, more people would understand the story. But who's going to find this? We're in a cave, submerged in water, at the very bottom of the map. How many players are going to stumble upon this, which is the key to the entire reason the Brotherhood of Steel is here? It's in this one small little spot. No one's going to know it. And so they're going to walk away thinking this it's this horrible retcon and doesn't make any sense when the, the real ex explanation is perfectly logical. Scott says, I'm so happy the Brotherhood in 76 isn't lore breaking. Yeah, I mean, it's perfectly possible for Roger Maxson on the West Coast to use an existing satellite to try and reach out to other members of the military after the collapse of the United States. In fact, that's likely what he would have done. I mean, what's more likely if you're a captain in the in the United States military and you're reforming the uh, the military in your own vision, you're making the Brotherhood of Steel, what are you going to do? Are you going to look for other surviving members of the army or are you just going to try and do it alone? I don't know. I mean, that makes a lot of sense to me. I'm glad we found this. Well, whoever sent me here, thank you. <laughs> Lots of great stuff. Two Marler Queens and... The key we've needed for the Brotherhood here in Appalachia.
Are there other campsites? If there are, we might find other holotapes. Hmm. Alright, let's do one big run around of the entire lake before moving south. Oh, we got something there. I'll be back for that. Man, I don't want to do your your event, guys. I just don't want to do it. I don't want to retake Spruce Knob. Wait, did I complete it? What? <laughs> I'm so confused. What's that? Okay, there's the camp we read. There should be another camp around here. <clears throat> okay. Campsite. RV. Lake. RV, I guess. El Camino says, love what you do. Can I get a shout to my buddy Steve? Sure, shout out to your buddy Steve. Good to have you guys here. Here's the other campsite. Oh, come here, head. Stop rolling. Stop. Okay, we got a recipe. No lore. Okay, let's try RV now. Oh. Thirsty. Two paths. I guess let's go this way. Passion Fallen Rocks. Okay, but we found a campsite next to a gold deposit. Also the parking lot.
Ah! Died while plunging. A sad tale. Matrix Crowl. And is this the other one? Yeah. And it leads right there. Okay. Well, let's continue south. Oh, there's another campsite this way. Pipe revolver and a crossbow bolt. No notes, no hollow tapes. All right, so I guess that is it. Looks like that's it. All right, I'm going to have to end the broadcast soon, but before I do, let's go get this RNG station and then take the road south. Because I know some of you are wanting me to take the road south. Bruce Knob Channels. Lore, salty note. Damn kids broke into the shed again last night. Whole thing reeked of cheap liquor and hormones. I swear if these kids spent more time on the lakes and less time glued to the television, this country wouldn't be in the sorry state it is today. All right, Grouchy. Jammin says it's pretty lame that Bethesda makes players jump through hoops to figure out why the Brotherhood of Steel is here. It absolutely should be discovered over the course of the quest line. It's like BGS doesn't care how well we understand. And then Master says, oh no, no, Ox, look, an alien! You didn't get me. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think something as important as that could have uh, been better relayed to the user, uh, to, to, to the player. I mean, we do know. I mean, it's not like we don't know that Roger Maxson on the West Coast reached out to Taggart. During, dur during the main quest, we do get that information. We just don't see that really important moment, right? Ah! My dragon's broken, too. Someone came through here. <laughs> Thank God he does not have good eyesight. Shadow Wolf says, Hi Oxhorn, I'm a fan, been watching you for a year now. Thank you, Shadow Wolf.
radio jammer. Oh no! Oh, it's a raider. Eh. Caps. So which raider gang owned this one, I wonder? Finally, a workbench. Oh, super cheap to repair. Ooh, my shotgun's about to go. That's not cheap to repair. Six springs. Ah! Volpine Soul says, So, Oxron, when can we expect a video on the Pillars of Transcendence? Oh, probably not for some time. <laughs> I don't think I want to be doing a video on the Pillars of Transcendence anytime soon. Maybe eventually. Wow, so many caps. Where do you find them all? I mean, you just play the game and sell stuff you don't need. And... I mean, I don't buy a lot. That might be. Let's see what this guy's got. Note to the Gormans. Human flesh is not acceptable tender here. Overdrive servos. Not exactly what I need. A bowie knife. Ooh. Interesting. All right, that's about it. So, you want me to follow the 103 South? Ooh, what's this? What is that? I gotta see what that is. I'm gonna take the 101 South. Sorry, I know you want me to take the 103, but that looked weird. Like uh, some sort of obelisk thing. Hold on, I'm getting text. <coughs> ah! What? Hey! You can't just poke me in the butt and then run away. You dog got to Red stag? Ah, oh, man, right when I got a text, too. So far, not a single server disconnect. I know, right? Scott says, okay, well, I'm not going to read it in case people don't want it spoiled, but he tells us what it is. He says, they're a non-verbal warning. Is that what that is? All right. Well, if so, I mean, it'll be a quick explore, and then we can go south on the 103. But I kept, I, I keep remembering the terminal entries entries we read at uh, Vault Tech University about um, runes and stuff. Scenic Overlook. Another one! 
Another mysterious button! Are we next to a nuclear silo? It's at another scenic overlook. But we're nowhere close to any nuclear silo. What the heck? Man, I'm confused. That's two scenic overlooks we've found with mysterious buttons in the Johns. Oh, and what do you want, you little charming fellow? Yeah, right? Ugh. I was talking and you were interrupting. That is rude. Another Tesla rifle. It's a silo exit. Yeah, everyone keeps telling me it's a silo exit, but look at where we're at. Oh, Site Charlie. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we are next to a silo. Site Charlie. This would be a great spot from which to watch a nuclear launch, I have to admit. <laughs> Mike says, go away, Gollum. I know. I love this little shotgun. I just wish it had a bigger... Seems a little. Oh, there it is! What? Oh, it's so cool! Look at that! That is a post apocalyptic sight if I ever saw one. Wow! Another one of these big exhaust things. We saw one of these at the nuclear disposal site in our last episode as well. Remember the one where they were disposing of FEV? We saw one of these outside of it as well. Uh, does it have something to do with uh, releasing... I don't know. Weird. And there's another one. Oh, I love it. It's so cool. You want otherworldly? This is otherworldly. Ooh, it's a Snallygaster! In the teeth. I gotta, I gotta quickly put on some, uh, let's put on Rad Shield. Ooh. Federal Disposal Field HZ-21. Is this the other one that they were talking about in the terminal entries? These obelisks are so great. This is what I love about Fallout, finding stuff like this. I want to know the story of this. Meyer treasure map. All right. Got ourselves a treasure map. Glowing meat. Scott says, look up longtime nuclear waste warning message. Yeah, I have seen um, videos of... Um, Messages uh, people have made, governments have made to try and warn future people of the dangers of toxic waste in 
in an event that English is no longer spoken or the languages of our world are no longer spoken. And yeah, I'm assuming that this is a similar thing. But honestly, to be honest, if you saw a bunch of obelisks off in the distance, what would you do? Would you go, oh, those are scary. I'm going to leave. Would you, or would you be like, huh, I wonder what those are. Let's get closer. So, <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know if the obelisks were a good choice for trying to warn people away and to get them to not explore the site. If anything, it's a big sign that says, hey, come here. Something interesting is here. Health Ox. Yeah, yeah, I'll take care of my health. Don't worry. Man. I want, like, a, a secret door in one of these, or... It's a uranium deposit. Wow, we can mine uranium at the very bottom of this thing. Oh, there are multiple uranium deposits here. Let's head on up. Who's shooting at me? Oh, it's a workshop. It's another workshop. Part of me is a little disappointed that it's a workshop. Since it's a workshop, it likely means we're not going to find any lore. Cat. Hi. Yes. I could be wrong. Where does that go? Oh, it's just outside. Mine. Thank you. Oh, lore! Site Director's Terminal! Yes! Horizon. H-O-R-I-Z-O-N. Bingo. 10,000 years initiative. One. Background. Federal Disposal Field HZ-21 is among the first such facilities in the Appalachia region to undergo 10,000 years the 10,000 Years Initiative. At this site, we provide a secure location to dispose of leftover nuclear waste from weapons production and research. Because this waste can take many thousands of years to break down and become safe, we must warn potential future inhabitants that this location is inhospitable to life. The 10,000 Years Initiative aims to solve this problem. Why is this necessary? Even if catastrophic civilization collapse does not occur, standard communications can break down for many reasons over long time periods. Languages are lost to time or evolve. We do not speak the same English spoken 1,000 years ago, let alone the same language spoken by our ancestors 10,000 years ago. 
We do not know who or what will inhabit these lands 10,000 years from now. Additionally, the media for storing such messages can become obsolete due to new technologies. Others, such as paper or paint, do not stand the test of time. Three methods. Our goal is to create lasting monuments that convey a sense of danger and harm to those who would come across them. Phase one involves the construction of gigantic concrete spikes, which can withstand weather erosion and shifting topography. They are designed to evoke a sense of dread. Okay, not wonder, all right and to discourage building on top of them. During phase two, we will post sturdy metal engravings around the perimeter. These engravings will be sealed and treated to withstand harsh conditions. They will include pictograms instead of modern language. <clears throat> In order to clearly convey a sense of danger to life, transcending any potential language barriers millennia from now. Conclusions. Once the site is filled to capacity, it will be sealed and left alone for as long as it presents a danger to life. While we cannot guarantee a safety forever, or that future generations will head our, heed our warnings, we can guarantee that we have done all that is humanly possible to provide the warnings in the first place. Messages. Error messages. Server unavailable. Transfer logs. All right. 56 barrels dep deposited in 76 August. Why is this one off? These two are off in 2077. I wonder why. There were two pending disposals that never got disposed. I wonder if that's what we find outside. Well, if you don't have a hazmat suit, this is where you go. Waste problem. The message server keeps going down and the phone lines haven't worked for weeks. I've been trying to tell them we're at capacity and can't accept any more waste material, but the trucks had to dump it anyway. We're having to pile up barrels at the surface level until we can resolve this issue. I need you to fix our lines of communication before we start glowing green. Okay, so that explains everything we see outside. Everything we can, huh? They didn't do everything they could. They still had a communication problem. Which led to this. All right, I'll claim it. Well, that was cool. Uh, that wasn't a holotape. That was a, um, a red decal on the ground. I know what you're talking about. So you want me to take the 103. All right, I'll take the 103. But then I'm going to have to leave. I mean, it's getting close to um, the end for this broadcast. I've got to work on two more videos that I haven't finished yet that I need to finish so that I can publish them while I'm away. All right, yeah, everyone is saying heal. Okay.
I have two workshops, both of which are under attack. <laughs> It also mentioned metal placards on the obelisks. Yeah, I didn't see any, so I think those were never realized. Universe says you got the milk machine plans. You can now craft the milk of human kindness. Yes, yes I can. Huh. It's a gravel road? Huh. When does it turn gravel? vault -Tec van. And this one really is a vault van. We see property of vault -Tec. Scott says, where did the name Oxhorn come from? It was just the name of one of my uh, characters in World of Warcraft. He was a a Taran, you know, the Taran are kind of half ox. I named him Oxhorn. Hmm. We're at the very bottom of the map. We're getting there. a vault tech guard station. Oh, hey. Which vault are you? Vault 96. Yes. Oh, the door is still closed. No terminal, nothing. Maggie says, hi, Ox. I don't know what to say. That's okay, Maggie. I'm just glad you're here. see between the cracks. Look at that. What's going on in there? Hmm. Why is it locked? Ah, why is it locked? I know it's probably going to be a DLC. I'm bummed that they launched this game with no vaults to explore. The only vault we get is Vault 76. But all the other vaults are locked up and we don't know what's going on. Man. Vault 96. That was the name. That was the number of the vault. That was the number on the vault suit of the dead guy we found impaled at the raider launch, wasn't it? at the ski lodge.
Man, I'm so... There's nothing. Like, I get nothing from this. I want... I want a terminal. At least at that other vault, we, we got a little bit of the story. We read a terminal. And a note, but that was it. Man. Well, I need to be leaving soon. But, hey. Tell you what. Let's run for this bear. See how far we get. What's at the bear? What was that? We are running off into the big unknown. Nothing on our map. Oh, there's something over there. Oh, that's north though. Oh no! White Spring again? Citizens, nuclear strike imminent. Please exit the area at your earliest convenience. Thank you for your cooperation. Oh, we've got a fence. Does this mean end of the world? Nope. Then well, what does it mean? Oh, it does mean end of the world. Oh, I can't get to the bear? Oh, I can't get to it. Oh, oh but there's one location way down here. Get a lake. Bulver says, have a Merry Christmas, Ox, all the way down Texas. You're the best. Thank you, Bulver. Jammin says, we can't expect all the vaults to be accessible since many aren't set to open yet. That's a good point. That's very true. Oh, and I can't go that way, but there's a cabin over there. I see it on my compass. This is pretty. Wow, what a nice, big, pretty lake. I think we're about to find the southernmost location, marked location in the entire game. It's right up on the border. Buff Canuck says Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from Canada. Thank you, Buff Canux. You too. Uh oh, Raiders. Oh, someone's here. Johnson's Acre.
Oh, oh look at that. Wow. Hmm, missile launcher. Someone was protecting his mom. Get up here. Raider corpse? Is that Johnson? Wow, lots of bodies piled up here. Ooh, impaled on... What? No! Oh, no! <laughs> Gotta do this again. Here we go. Oh, what is this? Who put this together? <laughs> Why would he do this? <laughs> That's so great. He's got a big pile of bodies here. So he is a raider. Raider Johnson, I guess. Killing people, putting their bodies over here, and using catapults to throw them over the ledge as f for fun. Wow. Nice guy, this Johnson. Nice guy. Ooh, look, there's even bird crap. Nice touch. All right, let's check out this outhouse. Maybe we can get a story of Johnson here. Ew. Taking a chance. I had just gotten back from my pre-dawn hunt when the bomb hit. I could see the mushroom cloud from the front window of the house. The way the window framed the explosion was strange. Almost like it wasn't really happening. Too perfect. Too beautiful. And luckily, Johnson Taker was too remote to be damaged, but I'm betting it won't be long before I start feeling the effects of the radiation. Whether I want to or not, I'm going to have to travel to Charleston to try and gather supplies before they're all gone. Damn it. If I'd only brought more than a weekend's worth of food, I could have stayed here where it's safe. If you're listening to this message, um, that probably means I found somewhere else to live. Maybe having the roof over your head for the night will give you hope. God knows we can all use a little bit of that right now. Poor Adam. Are there two ammo boxes stacked on top of each other here? Looks that way. Man, I keep finding these pumpkin pies. Launch a body and see if you can hit it with a shotgun. Well, I think the launching mechanisms have uh, all been used up. The TNT is gone. Let's see again. 
Yeah. Plus, I can't move them. <sighs> Whoops. <sighs> All right. I got to go. But before I do, Geronimo! Run into the forest until we hit an invisible wall. Oh. oh, I'm hovering on an invisible wall. Oh, I got behind it. Oh, wait, no, I didn't. Ah. Can I walk backwards into it? No. I can fall through the world. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. Oh, man. <laughs> Can I do that again? <laughs> no. All right. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for coming to this broadcast. All right. <laughs> Uh, thanks, everyone, for coming to this broadcast. <laughs> everyone is just now getting to the part where I fell through the ground. Yeah, yeah. Well, at least it spawned me back up top. Anyway, I I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to head out. It's getting really close to Christmas time. Our family's getting ready. we got a, a lot to do before the entire event. So um, i got to head on out. Again, as I said at the beginning of this broadcast, this is my last live stream for a while, at least a week, maybe longer. Um, I can't do the show tonight, so no show tonight, but thank you for coming to this broadcast. I had a whole lot of fun. We explored a lot of great places, and stay tuned for a bunch of lore videos. They're going to be small, a lot shorter than my usual videos. I'm calling them Fallout mini-sodes because they're so short, uh, but I will have content for you all this week and next week. So thanks for coming to the broadcast, and I will see you all, not soon, but soon, TM. <laughs>